because like he's he's been good in other things. Like he's, I I really like Lord of the Rings films. He's uh he's really good in in season two of Twenty Four. I want to say, and like Stranger Things, just just a lot of things. He's really good in it. Rudy, but just his character is just so he's just just detestable. <laughs> has no good qualities. <laughs> it's just he it just is useless from the start. Like he wakes up just with a, a slushy falling on him or an icy or whatever it is. Just he's he's a slob. <laughs> he is just has has no friends for good reason it seems. It's a perfectly <laughs> fine fa- his his family are a bit detached, so maybe some of the blame is them. He's got quite a really bratty sister, and his parents just don't seem to care about anything he does. Like it, when, when they yeah. find Link, they go and try and tell his mum, and his mum's like, I don't, "I'm busy. I'm on the phone. I don't care. You yeah. found a caveman. I don't care." They try to do the right thing too, and then they just ignore him. Yeah, and the sisters mean for no reason. <laughs> just mean just. Because he's a child. Yeah, because <laughs> you know what though? Because he's never directly mean to her, but she's probably tired of dealing with Dave. So yeah. she's, I hate this guy. Yeah, would you be? <laughs> Imagine if Dave was your brother. Oh gosh, You'd deal with that every day. Well, I'd have him building stuff for me. <laughs> yeah, and he cl- he can clean the house very quickly. He's got a hammock in his room. He probably built that himself. Yeah, I mean, he understands studs and walls and best placement for hammocks inside rooms, and that hammock probably stays. Yeah, wait, well, yeah, it does when when uh, Matt like breaks into the room. He has a fight with the hammock, and the hammock wins. Yeah, I mean, how secure is this hammock? It's far more secure than it should be. <laughs> now, I have another yeah. question for you. When when the bully sticks Dave to the wall, do you think Dave told him how to optimally do it? <laughs> you want to put a staple one above each shoulder, under the arm, and a couple <laughs> down the sleeves. That'll really support my weight. Yeah. Listen, if you're going to do it, do it right. <laughs> Don't do, do it on the crotch. It'll be very painful. <laughs> <laughs> I think he guided him. I think he helped him because that's an impressive feat with staples. Yep. And he, I guarantee you that he talked to, he he walked him through it. You have to. Have, like, well, you know, Matt, as we've, we've established, Matt pays attention in school. So Matt, Matt could be an engineering genius as well. Oh, yeah, you're uh, right. Because he knows. Yeah. Yeah, he you're knows, right. He knows what he's doing. He's done this before. This yeah. isn't this isn't his first stapling a kid to the wall. It's probably the first time Dave's been stapled to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I lo- you're right. The, he knows <laughs> he knows how to. He's just a smart guy who says shush like beautifully. <laughs> shush, shush. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, I, had to, I had to go back and watch that again. <laughs> Just him uh, saying shush. Robin Tooney in this movie is just a walking um, hormone in this yeah, film. Yeah, she is TTF with Link. She <laughs> is just ready to go. Uh, we just did a podcast second. about uh, Batman Forever, and the, she's like Nicole Kibben is towards Batman. But yeah, to, but that's Batman. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not, not just some caveman. <laughs> she, like, she's ready to go with the picture they're shown in the science class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I lo- I like the barbaric. <laughs> and then Rose McGowan's in it too. That's her first yeah. movie. Uh, yeah. She's just she's she's you know blinking you miss her but she's in there. She's crushing on everyone's crushing on Link in this movie. Well, I mean, he, he's next to Sean Astin. Yeah, you're right. So yeah. I mean, he's what? It's just by comparison, really. Yeah. Also, but... it's it's early nineties Brendan Fraser. You could do a lot worse. Yeah, I mean, he, he. I tell you what, though, Fraser pulled this role off with just there was no wink of irony, or he he made choices in this movie, and I think he did a good job with what he had. Yeah, I I think he did a great job. I mean, I feel like he should be a little insulted that he was cast as someone who looks like a caveman. <laughs> I know, I know, they have that line in it where they say like, "Oh, uh, Pro Magnum Man, he if you sit next to him on the bus and you wouldn't notice anything." That's that's very much a, in the world of this film kind of line like in in reality you no know, there'd be a distinguishing difference in the forehead yeah. i think but he he just seems to roll with it and and play the role and he's he's fantastic you know it's a, this is part, like the first film in a trilogy of brendan fraser learning how the modern world works yeah i think so you, ha- you have this one you have blast from the past and you have george of the jungle i think he learns how to use a microwave in all three of those films oh which and, and uh, the the French Show Sunday podcast, which is a member of the Lamb Podcasting Network, uh, they have worked out in the past. Brendan Fraser spends a lot of time underground in films. Oh, so you're I can't right. take the credit for that one. 
But yeah, this Blast in the Past, the Mummy franchise. He's always, always underground for some reason. In every film he does, he spends a considerable amount of peri- period of time underground. <laughs> <laughs> More than any other actor, potentially. And uh, here, how, how about I got some theories to drop on you, but I feel like we should save them for the second half. So let's take a break. And when we come back, I got I got a really weird theory to drop on you. How's this sound? Sounds good. All right. We'll be right back. Welcome back to movies, films, and flicks. And I got a I got a theory to drop on you, Jeff. Okay. And so okay. you haven't seen these movies, but True. <laughs> in the Poly Shore universe, in his two following films, Son in Law and In the Army Now, there are appearances from Link. Link is in both of those movies. So is Poly Shore playing the same character? No. So. It okay. either, so in Son-in-Law, he's a character who is, well, he could have changed his identity, I guess. Like, he started afresh. But, and so in Son-in-Law, he's this cool RA in a dorm, kind of looks after everybody. He's a cool college student, which makes more sense. And then in the Army Now, he joins the military reserve. And in Son-in-Law, Link is one of the college students. And in the Army Now, Link is in the military serving in Iraq. So. This means that Link has a very sh- short memory and has forgotten about Stony, or that Stony has twin brothers that don't know each other. I was thinking clones, but fine. Let's oh, clone, yeah, brothers. clones or twins. <laughs> yeah. There are clones or twins of Polly Shore. It's a terrifying world you pose. That's fine. So, <laughs> so what do you like? What would be more so? I don't, it, well, it can't be brothers because well, unless unless it's kind of a separated at birth, three identical strangers kind of thing. Because he never where, talks about it in Encino Man. Exactly. Well, we've we've assumed that he has like a broken home that he just <laughs> wants to stay out of. So maybe his brothers, his, his the other two uh, triplets, we wouldn't. Uh, they they ran away. They went their different directions, and one. Are they all set in California? These films. Oh. Uh. I like this. I don't remember. I think so. I would. I think so. Yeah. Uh, son. Uh, he's in California in son-in-law, and I'm not sure where they lived in in the army now. But it, it could be. It could be California. So well, yeah. Let, let's say all three of them take place in California. Oh, wherever they they take place, like it's it's plausible that the the, the, tr- the brothers could have gone there. So yeah, I think the brothers' route could be could be a goer. Uh, then again, this the, this film's kind of uh, approach to science cloning is very is very. Is an option? Maybe. <laughs> well, we've established Stony is an engineering genius. Maybe he it, he doesn't stop engineering. It's it's kind of bioengineering he can do. He can do cloning as well. He's cloned himself. This is a a multiplicity scenario. Well, if you think where... about this, oh, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. You're on a good one. Oh, just like I don't I don't know the intelligence level of the other Paulie Shaws in the other films, but are they, do you reckon they're on the same kind of savant level as Stony? Well, you know what? In Son-in-Law, right? He is the RA of a, of a dorm room, so he looks at the resident advisor. And when he goes to this farm with Carla Gugino, he really takes to the farm work and figures out everything really quickly in his own style. Does that make okay. So he, he knows how to do that. And in the Army now, he becomes a water filtration expert. So he learns how to, like, filter water, which is a science. Yeah, so he has he has an aptitude for... For, for science and, and engineering and working things out in all of these things, so it's it's plausible that they're all clones of the same brain. So yeah, I'm going I'm going for a multiplicity scenario. I think you're where right. Stony develops cloning technology, clones himself, and just because he he wants to help more people, he realizes <laughs> he worked out that Dave is is going to be a full time job to fix, so he has to clone himself so that other he can still help other people. And like, you... he the original Stony has to stick with Dave and potentially guide him through the rest of his life because Dave is just it's just a, just it's just Dave you know this is this is a full time job but he still wants to help he wants to help the world so he's got to clone himself do you and think he when, sends the clones out. when Dave gets out of his house and gets on his own like away from his parents and kind of realizes his own self at Stony Engineering do yeah. you think he'll improve I hope so for just for for Dave's sake and for Stony's sake 
And for Link's sake, because hopefully Link doesn't stick around Dave too much. Just, I, I hope he does. I, I feel like he, he would do. Maybe once he gets away from his sister and, you know, his, his parents who don't care, once, once he realizes that he and Robin just aren't going to work out and he can get over his fixation with this crush he's had since he was a baby. It just, yeah, I think, I think that's Dave's main problem is he, he's just been focusing too much time on Robin. Do you think and he, he needs to find something else to focus on? Do you think he's going to get, uh, an acceptance letter from a college that I didn't apply to because Stony is like his guardian. So it's going to be, hey, you you can go to Georgia Tech, which is a uh, engineering school, one of the best engineering schools in the United States. You have been accepted on a full ride. Do you think Stony could pull that? I think so. He'd he'd have to. Uh, well, it, it might be if it's based on an interview, then Dave might have a problem. Oh gosh. Uh, unless Stony goes and pretends to be Dave to pass the interview. So uh, Stony might be a, a big donor to Georgia Tech. Could possibly be, yeah. If he if he can afford to develop this cloning technology and he's got the whole Stony engineering, then yeah, I'd imagine he is a big. But then, see, if he if he if he's uh, got all this money in in Georgia Tech, why is he recruiting people from like schools and building them up to be good engineers when he could just go to the engineering school and take them from there? Well, you watch all these Halloween. Uh, so there's all these Hallmark Christmas movies and Santa and Mrs. Santa Claus. They're always somewhere where they don't really need to be helping somebody just randomly. Okay. So maybe he's just like that. Maybe he's yeah, engineering. He's just that kind of a person. Yeah. yeah. And also in son-in-law. <laughs> she called him engineering clause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for stepping on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of that one. Yeah. It should be. <laughs> I'm patting myself on my back right now <laughs> with an invention that Stoney built to actually make optimized padding on the back. Yeah, it, it takes very little effort. Just the system of pulleys. You've got to be sat in the right place in your chair. But it's a very, <laughs> it's a very satisfying self backpack. <laughs> and I, I just before we move on, I, I want to say that he does help the family and son-in-law. And in in the Army now, he helps David Allen Greer stop, stop becoming – you know, such a wimp and neurotic, David Allen Greer becomes kind of a tough guy. So he does sort of guide people in, in those movies. In the, the what, what was, so the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so the Stony Cinematic Universe, the SCU, these SCU. three movies, he just guides people. Yeah. Wow. Th this is brilliant. Yeah, I'm aboard. I like it. I, I like this film more now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, oh, I have something to back up your cloning idea. Okay. This caveman has been frozen in ice for what's hundreds of thousands, millions, I don't know, however a long. A really long time. A very long time. They unthaw him in such a way that he doesn't fall through the sawhorses that are holding him up. And the way he doesn't dissipate in the ice. So I think the way that they, they put the heat on that ice cube allowed him to thaw optimally, like optimized the thawing. So he understands heat to caveman ratio in ice yeah. cubes. That's that's an advanced advanced thermodynamics. <laughs> yeah. Advanced thermodynamics. <laughs> I, I'm a little disappointed they didn't like, rig up a bath underneath him to catch that pure glacial water that was being melted. That, that, that would have been some good stuff. Oh my like, gosh. Uh, but that's, that's wasted now. That's down, that's down the California drains. And they lived that's in gone. California. They could have sold that for a lot of money. Yeah. If they would have saved it, he could have cloned that water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or at least, like, diluted it. Like, it's, it's like 10% pure uh, caveman water. No, I want to say, for a caveman, he does pretty well adjusting. <laughs> Exceptionally well. <laughs> I do love the bit when he threatens the post office guy, uh, the mailman with a shovel, and the mailman puts the package on the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, I think it's before that he's uh, apprehended by a garbage truck to make the school like an elephant. <laughs> he, <laughs> starts, he starts whapping it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, I had a lot of time for all of the Link exploring the modern world kind of, kind of stuff. That's, I, that's a, um... I did like his relationship with the dog. They did The dog's face gets pushed away a lot by Dave. Dave, Dave treats that dog poorly, yeah. and Brendan Fraser pushes that dog away. But that dog is a pretty good actor. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't mind sharing its food. Yeah, that was uh, – do you know what that was? They said that was uh, – Cookie crisps. Yep, yeah, cookie crisps. <laughs> 
Hey, you do as much research as I do, man. That's awesome. Uh, just a little. <laughs>